Have you ever been confused by the different methods for getting reusable cells in iOS development? It can be tricky, right? If that's you, then you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the differences between DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier 4 and DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier. I totally understand how frustrating it can be when you're trying to optimize your table views and the documentation feels overwhelming. You're not alone in this. Many developers have faced the same confusion. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked about the difference between DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier 4 and DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier. They believe that the first method returns a reusable cell and adds it to the table view, while the second just returns a cell. Does that sound familiar? Let's clarify this together. So what's the real difference? The method DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier 4 is designed to always return a cell, ensuring that it is properly DQ'd and added to the table view. On the other hand, DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier may return nil if no reusable cell is available, which can lead to unexpected behavior if not handled correctly. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a pro tip that will help you manage your table views more efficiently. To clarify the difference between the two methods, let's start with DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier 4. This method is used when the user needs to obtain a reusable cell and ensure that it is properly initialized for a specific index path. On the other hand, DQ Reusable Cell with Identifier is used when the user simply wants to retrieve a reusable cell without needing to specify an index path. This method does not guarantee that the cell is initialized for a specific position. Now, regarding the code example provided by the user, the first line retrieves a cell and adds it to the table view. This means that the cell is ready for display. However, the second line retrieves another cell without adding it to the table view. Finally, when the method returns another cell, it does not affect the cell that was added to the table view. The cell added in the first line remains in the table view, while another cell is simply returned. Fun fact, did you know that the first iOS apps were built with Objective-C? Now we have Swift, which makes things a lot easier and more efficient. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user confirms that your understanding is mostly correct. They suggest checking the official documentation for more details. Additionally, they recommend looking at another answer on Stack Overflow for further clarity on the differences between the two methods. That's the end of that answer. Let's see another perspective. An alternative approach highlights the differences between the two methods. The user points out that both DQ reusable cell methods return a cell, but the older method returns nil if no cell is available, while the newer method will crash the app in that case. They also note that the older method supports iOS 5 and earlier, while the newer method is compatible with iOS 6 and above. That's all on that answer. Let's take a look at another one. This user suggests using DQ reusable cell with the index path parameter. This method guarantees that you receive an initialized cell that is the correct size for the specified index path, allowing for proper layout within the content view. In contrast, if you use DQ reusable cell without the index path, you must check if the cell is nil and configure it yourself. This method may return nil if no reusable cell is available. It's important to note that in newer versions, using DQ reusable cell with index path will crash if the cell isn't registered, while the older method simply returns nil. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always use DQ reusable cell with identifier for when you need to ensure a cell is available. This will save you from potential crashes and unexpected behavior in your app. And there you have it. You now understand the differences between these two methods. Remember, using the right method can make a huge difference in your app's performance. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button for more tips and don't miss our next video where we'll dive deeper into optimizing your table views.